Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the International E Podcast. Before we start, let me talk a little bit about the podcast. So the International E Podcast is going to be a space where different international students, prospective ones, as well as current international students, could get a glimpse of the life of international students in the U.S. or abroad. This week... I am joined by my very, very dear friend, Jaime. Welcome to the show, Jaime. Hi, Ruth. Thank you for having me. Hi. Welcome, welcome. So let me talk a little bit about your background. So Jaime was born and raised in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. After graduating from high school in Ethiopia, she moved to Boston and attended Bunker Hill Community College and then transferred to Wentworth Institute of Technology to study architecture in which she's currently attending her last year. Do you want to add more? Um, you pretty much have touched it all. I went to a Bunker Hill Community College um, as a start. They didn't have architecture, so I transferred to Wentworth Institute of Technology to pursue my bachelor's in architecture. And mm -hmm. it's been quite a journey so far. Great. Can't wait to hear all about it. So as the title of this episode is dealing with self-worth, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word self-worth? So thinking about self-worth, the first thought I have is mostly related to school or my achievements uh, in relation to um, self-worth but I guess that's like a, a bad way to start off in terms of uh, since since you are the person um, that put your worth um, and understanding mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. not comparing um, or a value putting worth to um, your school or What's it mm -hmm. called? Um, it should you shouldn't value yourself based on of of, of what your school grade is or whatnot. If that right, right. Um, and I really like the fact that you said it's the worth that you put on yourself or like how you value yourself. Um, similarly, I think when when I hear the word self worth, I also associate it with the the worthiness that we feel as individuals and it's not a measure of you know something that is put on us by other people I mean the measurements could be like the standards could be like society's standards but it's at the end of the day we're we're evaluating ourselves it's an introspective kind of um, experience I guess would you agree yeah I totally uh, agree um, especially picking up of what you said about um, dealing with self-worth in terms of uh, school-wise or your performance um, would set you off maybe in a wrong path if, mm -hmm. if you're continuously associating um, your worth with what you actually do. Um, mm -hmm. So finding that balance in between of uh, what or like disassociating your worth from what you're doing um, would be really helpful. Right. That's, that's very true. And my follow-up question would be, what do you normally associate self-worth with? Um, so as I said, as a student for the past few years, I mm -hmm. associate my, I used to associate mm -hmm. my self-worth, like my self-worth with a lot of the work that I do in school and mm -hmm. my productivity or like, it's like, oh, um, I'm not productive th this week or something like that. And then you associate it with like, oh, like, is this worthy or like, am I worthy to pursue this project or so forth? Um, mm -hmm. But the, the, just understanding that, um, I guess it's like a, a different level of um, self-consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, when you understand yourself and when you place your worth, uh, it would help you in the future. Right, right. And I totally agree, like, especially um, as an international student in college, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to, 
you know that you know to measure our worthiness or a lot of things could happen that maybe make us feel like oh we're not worthy of things like for instance I think the people that you surround with um play an integral of you how like how you feel about yourself because if if you surround yourself with like I mean for instance if they're like really competitive they're always getting A's like if we're if we're talking about like you know school and academics and you might not necessarily be get, getting you know those grades um I guess the standards put could be a reason for you not to feel worthy would that be correct I think um yes um comparing yourself is a it's it's a it's a way of starting a disaster in a way. <laughs> right uh, because yeah. understanding that you yourself is unique in perspective of others especially when you're international students and you're thrown into an environment where you're not um when, where you're not familiar and um and at the same time trying to navigate school and all that can be difficult but at this at that time um staying through to yourself and um and just cuz like understanding your self worth would lead you to be in the right path in a way of um cuz you'd start understanding okay like this doesn't define who i am and right. you start um i'm like trying to find words that could yeah um, help describe um mm-hmm my understandings of uh, self-worth in relation to being an international student. Um, right. So at the end of the day, it's about uh, finding your own voice and um, not comparing yourself to what others are doing and um, understanding your unique um, choices or your your life story has led you to where you are and just like believing that and um you know being different or unique is brings its own sauce so (laughs) yeah exactly exactly that's really beautiful what you just said and maybe like to help us um make it more specific maybe if I ask you another question which is what were some of the experiences or moments that you know in the past college students question your self-worth um so okay uh being in an architecture um college where majority is uh male white dominated field Mm -hmm. um and doing my first co-op at and what is a co-op can you repeat that yeah what is a co-op for those of us who don't know oh uh so it's a collaborative uh learning uh Mm -hmm. wait is that one (laughs) it's more of like a like a practice right the things that you yeah it's like in theory and then your practice right yeah So Mm -hmm. it's an internship and um, for our school, you need to, um, you need to go through two of those uh, in order to graduate. And um, for my first co-op, it was my first experience um, getting hired as an um, intern architect and being in an environment. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. So being in an environment, it was like one of the best experiences I could ever have. And I, I feel like I've learned so much and it was the best experience overall but at the same time um it would make you quite like not being able to see yourself and others people can make you question about um am I like welcomed in this type of environment or like you question your worth and um your productivity maybe too um and just so yeah that, that becomes tricky because uh associating your worth could dive into so many different aspects about um as I said your productivity and um Mm -hmm. what you offer to your job and stuff exactly exactly and I think for me 
when I think about self-worth and like in relation to being an international student in college, um, I think it starts even before you become a college student, like when you choose to apply which schools um, to attend, because, mm. you know, some of us self-reject, like before we even try to apply. Uh, we uh-huh. think it's too far. We we think, you know, our dream scores are actually dreams and, you know, we might not actually get them. So when yeah. we self-select ourselves out of um, applying to these reach schools, which we might end up actually getting accepted to, I think we experience a level of questioning our self-worth and being like, do I actually deserve to go in a place like that? Or, mm-hmm. you know, I think that's like the first, even for me, like personally, when I was thinking about applying to colleges, I think I kind of limited myself in a way where I was just like, maybe, you know, I should be more realistic and apply to a place that I know I would probably get in, Mm -hmm. but not apply to like reach like schools. Um, And then the second part of, I think, um, questioning my self-worth for me happened while in college, specifically the first year, because the first year, as I've talked about so many times, is like a very important year of any college student's life because it's the transition transition from high school um into your college life and you do a lot of experiments and it's all a you know trial and error year but that's the moment where you encounter people who have accomplished so much and they're the president of this club they're getting straight A's they have all these friends and they have time to bond but then they are also doing all these other cool stuff and You know, in those kinds of moments, it makes you feel like, okay, oh, my God, what am I doing with my life? And, you know, it makes you question your self-worth quite a lot. Um, Would you agree? Like, do you have any, like, specific stories or, like, moments that um, it reminds you of? Um, Yeah, as you're speaking, I can relate to some of the stuff Sim been saying, uh, especially when you're uh, seeing uh, high achievers in the your environment and you're a freshman. And you're, for me, it was more like, okay, I need to talk to that person to understand how they're doing this. Exactly. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure if I uh, related it to my self-worth, but I can see how it would manifest like before that. Uh, you said when you're applying to colleges uh, and all that. I was more uh, um, fear-based um, mm-hmm. and I guess as I said like um, self-worth can be associated in different or like it can show up in different forms of uh, being fearful to uh, pursue what you want or being um, not motivated or procrastinating or um, and it, it takes different forms of like valuing yourself and mm-hmm. um asking yourself if you're worthy um right so it's definitely a a mix of so many uh emotions and it's like a roller coaster of uh, discovering yourself and and it's okay to feel that way because normally college is you're there to figure out and learn and uh, grow Mm -hmm. so uh being in this position it it shouldn't be overwhelming or you're not going to be the only person that's going through this path because Exactly. If you look around and yeah, if you'd like talk to other people too, they hundred mm-hmm. percent sure they're going through the same <laughs> road as you are. Exactly, exactly. And you know what? Like sometimes some people are just better at pretending that they have their stuff together than other yeah. people. That, that's what I've realized. Like after so many years, make it till you I make mean, it. Yes. No, like seriously, because when I was a first year, like a person that I thought had it all together. When I actually got to know them and they told me all the things that are happening in their lives, I'm just like, how do you handle all of that? But then you have this facade of like, you got everything set, you know, Mm -hmm. like, you know, people would think like, you're you're great, like you have everything sorted out. So I think um, part of what I've learned, I guess, over the years of being a college student is sometimes you have to you know, even if you're not feeling like you have everything together, I think the the vibe you, you give off, I guess, like, you know, some someone else could perceive that as she knows what she's doing, like she got everything sorted, you know? So yeah. I think there's a difference in like perception of if people are actually, you know, handling things well versus if they're pretending to do. 
totally um i totally agree with what you're saying <laughs> yeah but it took me a while to understand that though and to figure it out yeah i mean we kind of live in this world especially in social media thinking about it where uh, you know everything is about like kind of masking uh, your life in a way and uh it's we've created a space for people to act like or to pretend you have everything together and you know exactly. you're leading this life um mm-hmm. however I, I guess like the best advice is just take a deeper look and you know um no one has everything figured out we're all learning and <laughs> <Please>. exactly <Yeah. laughs> we're all trying to figure it out i think that's what um, i understood um but my next question for you is, um, do you think your experience um, as an international student in college was unique in the sense that made you question your self-worth? Or what I'm trying to say is, does, did your identity have anything to do with you questioning your self-worth? Mm. I think it, it would play a factor because... Uh, I could give you an example of one of my classes where I took a women's suffrage class and it was about, you know, uh, women's getting their freedom uh, to vote and mm-hmm. you know, all that. And mm-hmm. I went into that class um, just to be inspired and uh, to to understand the history behind, like, you know, the women's power and strength. Uh, however, mm-hmm. like, as I went to that class... I found out that um, the women's suffrage movement had been like divided into two, like being uh, black female and mm-hmm. you know like white female and all that, and right. uh, that that made me question. That was the time when I questioned. Okay, so not only am I black, I'm a, an immigrant black female, <laughs> and exactly. you know all this, and um, and it made me question uh, where I kind of belonged in this world and. Uh, if whether or not I have to fight for the places that I need to be at. Um, so subconsciously or cautiously, like taking this class kind of opened my eyes of what mm-hmm. actually happens around um, these world that we're, <laughs> that we're just getting familiar of. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you for sharing that. That was, <laughs> that was very interesting because, um, I think, like, similarly to me, um, because, like, identity plays that we do, and especially, like, and we're in in college, and and we're trying to figure out things, like, trying to figure out what we're majoring in, what we're doing after graduation, how we balance our social life, our academic life, how we're choosing our friends. I think this all has to do with our identity, because for me personally, I interacted a lot with people who were also international students because we had the, you know, international students pre-orientation at the beginning of the fall semester. And that's where we got to meet. And it was mostly a tight knit group of international students. I mean, we did interact with like domestic students, but our identity as international students was kind of given to us. Because mm-hmm. I never had to identify as an international student before college, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, I didn't even yeah. know what an international student was before college. But then once yeah. we went there, it was an identity, a label, I guess, that was given to us, like people who are from outside the States, right? And so as part of that, once you form that friendship, once you form that group, um, I guess you tend to value yourself or give yourself worth based on what you know, what other people think or what the standards of society are, quote unquote. But like reflecting back on my college experience, I think um, some of the self-worth questioning that that I did had also to do with some of my other Ethiopian friends who were there. You know, am I Ethiopian enough or am I too American or, you know, obviously Mm -hmm. I'm not a U.S. citizen, but like... um, (laughs) just like trying to like you know how people like compare um mm-hmm. the level of uh, love or whatever pride you have for your country and i've also seen that with other international students 
Um, did you experience a similar thing or have you seen other people experience a similar situation? Um, I think, th- so speaking for myself, for uh, being Habasha, I feel like we have a lot of self-pride. <laughs> and <laughs> we, yes. And we really do put ourselves in a pedestal and like, you know, uh, and it's a, it's an interesting way of like seeing that. Uh, but uh, I, I do know that like with my international friends that I have, I can relate to a lot and I can understand where they're coming from. And, you know, it's a whole another community. Um, so I, so looking back, uh, I think, um, I, I don't think I associate it with self-worth, but I know that mm-hmm. as an Ethiopian, we've been always like, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm Ethiopian, this, this, that. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's, like, one of the reasons why, um, you know, identity plays a, an integral part in our daily lives and how we view ourselves as well. Um, but my next question for you is, when did you realize that you shouldn't measure yourself based on like other people's standards to measure your self-worth. Like when did you find out that you had to have your own level of, I guess, measurement of like feeling like, okay, I am worthy. I deserve to be in this college. I deserve to be in these classes. I deserve to have every opportunity that is given to me. Like when did you reach that stage? That stage. <laughs> That's an interesting <laughs> question. Um, I mean, I don't know if it if it was like a stage or like if um, because it's definitely like um, a steps that you've been taking uh to like recognize that okay no uh despite what others people say or like despite my experience of like what I view my self worth as um. You just kind of keep doing your own thing and um, you you get recognition for that um, despite like, you know, what you put your self worth and understanding that despite what you're producing um, doesn't equate to your self worth would put a lot of uh, peace to yourself. And uh, that brings a lot of, I don't know, for me, since I'm uh, an, an artistic or um a creative person that would allow me to express myself better mm-hmm. um and uh, when I start focusing on myself <laughs> is mm-hmm. when I like I feel like I understood okay I need to stop disassociating my self-worth with uh, these external factors that infatuate or like bring my self-worth high or low uh, which is unhealthy to do um, mm-hmm. so just finding that peace or that balance in your life where, um, where your outside factor doesn't like disturb or, uh, bring in unwanted negative things. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a journey and I don't think, uh, I would say like I'm arriving or if I've arrived there, but yeah, it's a yeah. process. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's a learning experience, like, for everyone. Um, mm-hmm. And even, like, after college, I'm pretty sure we're, we're still going to deal with um, our ideas of, you know, self-worth. Because, um, especially, like, in college, there are a lot of things that, that happen that make us question our worthiness. Or, I guess, like, specifically when we talk about imposter syndrome. Like, for instance, as an example, like Mm -hmm. a lot of international students, particularly people of color, experience this a lot because um, especially if you go to a predominantly white institution, you feel like you don't belong there. um, You got in because of affirmative action or, you know, (laughs) which. But there are moments where you find yourself in a classroom and only a handful of people look like you. So you're there questioning, like, okay, if I raise my hand and share my opinion, would this be associated with the group of people that I represent? And, you know, some of those thoughts can inhibit us from experiencing things or sharing our own opinions. And um, I guess my next question is, have you experienced 
um, imposter syndrome because I know I have. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I did. Um, as you said, like being in an environment where you don't, there isn't as many Ethiopians or let alone Ethiopians, um, African Americans or international students in the, the school I go to. So, mm-hmm. um, it definitely makes you question it's like oh no like you know uh, do it is I might like um did I truly achieve this or was this all these other factors that kind of helped me mm-hmm. um be in this position that I am and right. I guess at the end of the day I would always go back to uh understanding that everything I've done um has led me to the position that I've I'm at and not like these Mm -hmm. you know like affirmative actions or whatever (laughs) other people might have associated to Mm -hmm. and um I mean it's it's really interesting because uh yeah as you said like self-worth uh plays in such a different roles um Mm -hmm. in in as you said like um what's it called Um, imposter syndrome (laughs) imposter syndrome yeah right right Um, but yeah yeah it's actually a very interesting thing because I didn't even know there was a term for what I was feeling but once I found out about the term I was like oh my god this was what I was feeling at this Mm -hmm. time um because I remember specifically like in one class I probably was the only Ethiopian but also the only black person and I think the conversation was something about Africa Mm. and the professor asked her a question obviously people expected me to answer it but then I think at that point I had already realized like I didn't want to be the spokesperson for all things Africa so I didn't raise my hand and so mm-hmm. I, I could tell like the professor was a bit <laughs> disappointed <laughs> but I was still like you know if you know if I don't feel like sharing a certain opinion I don't have to just because I'm the only black person in that room. But this also reminds me of a time, um, not in college, but in high school. So I also went to high school in the U.S. So it was our um, uh, environmental science class that I was taking. And um, the so we were watching a documentary, and the documentary was about uh, famine and drought. And obviously Ethiopia came up <laughs> like during the, you know, the ninth, the Sawasawat Dirk is what it's called, but it, it came up. And yeah. in that classroom, I was the only black person and everybody knew I was from Ethiopia. And so literally through the whole documentary, I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> Thank God, like the bell rang and so like nobody had time to comment on what we watched. And mm. but I, I still like specifically remember feeling like, oh my god, this is what people are associating me with, like, you know, all the negative stereotypes that people take from a certain place could be associated with you just because you're from that place. Um, Mm -hmm. Has a similar thing happened to you? I mean, being African, it makes you realize, like, coming to America makes you realize that... um, people have such a negative aspect I mean like okay so when you're living in Ethiopia you don't see it as uh, mm-hmm. as a disadvantage or you know, that you're missing out in this like great um social uh, living or something sort of um but mm-hmm. then when you're coming here people would uh would feel bad for you <laughs> like exactly. after like looking as you said I, I I guess people would start feeling like, oh, these poor kids in Africa, like, you know, they're coming here for education and all that. Mm-hmm. And, um, sometimes I find it funny, but other times I'm just like, you know, I, I've never viewed myself as this person that like, um, like stereotypical. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's definitely interesting in, in terms of uh, understanding what it means to be. Ethiopian living in America exactly Um, exactly and I'm sure like we could talk forever about like the moments that made us question our self-worth it could be even like minor incidents or um, interactions with with someone you know but 
those conversations would make us question about our own self-worth. Um, so my next question for you is, what were some of the things that you did to help you uh, become assertive, to be confident, or to maybe like avoid questioning yourself constantly and to be comfortable in the place that you're in? Um, yeah, so as I've kind of said before, it's understanding yourself better and um, and not relating your, your work or what you're doing to your self-worth. And mm-hmm. your self-worth is this untouchable position where no one can reduce or take away. Um, mm-hmm. and I love once that. You, yeah, so once you understand that, okay, my self-worth is up here. And like whatever mm-hmm. I've achieved or don't achieve, it's still going to be this constant thing that's going to help me keep going on. And um, right. and just like um, there's this analog or uh, people won't, you, you can't allow people to put your worth however they want. And mm-hmm. understanding that and like it could be a professor, it could be a student, it could be anyone in your environment. You don't let right. them choose how much you, you're valued or your opinion is accepted um, your responsibility as a student should be voicing your opinion because as an international student I think we should start understanding that uh, have by the school having us benefits a lot because we have perspectives of um, life or our experiences has allowed right. us to view life in different ways Mm -hmm. And by being in these places and by voicing our opinion and by um, looking at things in a different perspective would allow other people to be like, oh, hey, like, you know, this is another perspective that other people have. And um, it would enrich your class. So um, not being afraid to speak up and um, that it's okay being the international student or black or uh whatever yeah. you're labeled as <laughs> um, yeah and yeah just not being scared of because it comes with fear too your values. right right but, right um, so yeah for sure yeah thank you for sharing those are like some really wise words and um like even for me when I reflect back on my college experience I think some of the things that I did that helped me maintain my um I guess integrity or not question my self-worth as much is having that you know deep reflective work of like you know who am I as a person what do I value and knowing that opinions of other shouldn't dictate what I feel about myself um, or how I feel about myself so I think it takes a lot of time and patience to reach that stage and I'm you know I'm sure we're all still learning how to master that because it's still a learning process but it it does get better uh, you know as the years go on and as you experience a lot of a lot of interactions with people as well um so as we're ending our conversation what advice do you have for prospective international students for current international students who are dealing with the topic of self-worth? Ooh, this is a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, pressure is high. No, I'm kidding. No pressure. I <laughs> so I would say just keep being your, 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 your own self and, um, and put your opinions, your, your, uh, your thoughts and all that out there and, and know that you are valued, you are appreciated. Um, and no matter what others say, um, that shouldn't be a factor where it would reduce um, your self-worth. And um, like, you know, as you said, we're all learning, we're all growing. Um, so at the end of when, once you graduate and once you're done with this whole, you're going to see your growth and how much you have accomplished and yeah. all the you know, all the good things that come <laughs> and go. So exactly. yeah, at the end of the day, it's just be true to yourself. Mm-hmm. 
wow again so many so many gems from this conversation I'm, I've enjoyed it so much um for me I think the advice I would give for for international students honestly is to surround yourself with positive people um and not a lot constantly or like people who are negative i think you know energy is contagious and so when you surround yourself constantly with people who are who are negative you know thinkers or you know who who tend to see i guess like the cliche term who tend to see the glass as half empty not half full um mm-hmm. it kind of like it rubs off on you and so the thought processes that you have or like your you know how you measure yourself or how you see yourself in front of other people it, it, it could actually affect that so I would, I would definitely advise people to surround yourself with positive people with people who support you um people who share with you opportunities that they think you're perfect for you know people who are resourceful and people who just have your back in the end of the day when you surround yourself with those kinds of people um i've found like you know your self-worth um you wouldn't question it as much I think um would you agree yeah definitely having that person that you could always have to talk to or um Mm -hmm. having a group of people that aspire to become um or do great things or like you know having positive people would really help uh you in terms of finding yourself in this environment uh that you're thrown into um so (laughs) yeah for sure for sure any last words last words as you as i said is keep being yourself um you know just (laughs) yeah keep being yourself i love that and with that, we end a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much, Jaime, for being my guest on another episode of the International E Podcast. Oh, thank you. It was such a great time. Uh, thank you so much, Jaime. So just as a last minute item, please make sure to go follow the official Instagram page at International E by Ruth. That is L-I-E. And send an email with your questions about being an international student to internationallybyruth at gmail.com. Thank you again for tuning in today. Hope you have a lovely week ahead of you and take care of yourselves, everyone. Bye. Bye.